So here is the kind of stuff you'll be doing in your homework this week in your quizzes. And so we'll have a series of transactions, including our beginning inventory, our purchases and our sales. And I'll be asking you to calculate what the revenue is, what the cost is, and what your ending inventory balance is after these transactions. And so you have to make sure and you can go through and determine all of these. And we'll go through and make a Google Sheets on this. So um, let's do that together. I think that's important. Let's see. So notes, people, I hope we're all taking our notes. So let's use FIFO. So we'll track this here. Here is information. I'll share this. We all have access to this, right? Send it to everybody. We'll have date, activity, units acquired, cost, it's sold, bell price, inventory left over. Right, and so we can just track this. We can say 81, 83, 814, 817. This is how I do the assignment. So I'm trying to help you here by walking you through exactly how I do this. And then our activity, uh, beginning inventory, purchases, sales, purchases, purchases, sales totals here. Units acquired, 10, 15. They're only going to be acquired on our purchase days. And I'll add a line here. Cost, 91, 106, 115, 119. And then this times, this is where they're getting their full amounts. Units sold, 20, 23, and then we'll add a line here, sales. and our inventory left over, so we start with 10, and we get 10 plus 15, or the best way you could do this is 10 plus, uh, well, let's see, plus this minus unit sold. So 5, 25, 35, 12. And then we can do some sums here to figure out total costs. Um, our total cost is here. So, so sales are here. And that's our inventory leftovers here. Here's our totals. So this is how they're calculating all the numbers here. And that's what I want you all to see. Uh, so now you, you can go in and see this example, exhibit 3.5. 3 and you can see how they calculate all of these numbers. And so these numbers, we're going to flow through and see how that can be changed through the FIFO, through LIFO, and all of that. So there's also a method called specific identification. And this isn't used that often, but if we're able to identify every single good, rather than doing FIFO or LIFO, if we can ma accurately match the costs because we have such a unique business, we can just match those costs themselves. And so we're, I'm gonna require you to know this just so you can understand the theory. But if we were able to use a specific identification method, uh, let's go through a few of these here. Uh, specific identification of FIFO and LIFO. So specific identification, we know the total costs are 5990 are available for sale. We know though, so total costs, 55 units. But we know that we sold this August for on August 14th we can specifically identify that we had eight plus units at $91 and 12 units at 106 for the 2000. These are just facts given. Like if we are able to identify that amount, 
we can then determine the ending inventory and cost of goods sold because we can specifically identify. We can't get that just from the fact pattern here and most companies aren't going to use that. And so this would just be based on that fact pattern given. So let's say specific identification. Let's say that we knew that they sold eight of these, eight units acquired at 91. Eight times the 91 plus the 12 times the 106 cost of August working sale. And then after that, we track and we know that we only had two left over from the August 1st from the 91 bucket, and that we'd know we would only have three left after. And so we could track that um, August 14th sale. We could say that it was eight and 12, and then we'd say leftover minus two. And so this is kind of how we track all the information to make sure that we can accurately associate the cost. And then cost from August 8th, 30th sale, you can see the complexity they add here. So they sold the remaining of the two, the remaining of the three, 15 of this amount. So we put here. So from August 30th sale, So they had two, three, 15, and three. Oh. And so, you, and then I'll just put the number from here to two, five, two. And you can see the total cost. Ending inventory here. If we add these two together, we can figure out what our ending inventory balance is here. Our cost of goods sold would be this 4,582 if we use this specific identification method.